Well, good morning. I haven't seen some of you uh, in a week, so Merry Christmas. Okay, there's participation. Uh, this is going to be a long morning if you don't participate, so we'll try it again. <clears throat> hey, good morning. See, that's so much better. All right, I haven't seen some of you since, uh, since a week ago, so Merry Christmas. And I probably won't see some of you for another week, so Happy New Year. See, that was so much better, right? Like we find ourselves in, in that kind of ambiguous time that many of you are probably confused about and trying to figure out what life is, uh, that, that mysterious time between Christmas uh, and New Year's. And I have been reading some tweets over the last couple of days that kind of address maybe how some of you may feel dealing with this time that exists right now. I want to share with some of those with you this morning. Uh, the first one. Those awkward days between Christmas and New Year when you don't know what day it is or what you're even doing with your life. How many of you can relate to that? Like you're sitting there like, what? Number two, we're now in those hazy days between Christmas and New Year's. Is it Thursday? Is it Saturday? Have I eaten today? Should I set an alarm or sleep all day? Do I care if I wear the same thing three days in a row? Now, be honest, how many of you are wearing the same thing three days in a row, right? Some of you are like, oh, oh you can smell me, right? No. Third one. The six or so days between Christmas and New Year's is truly no man's land. Like, am I supposed to sleep all day, get my life together, spend the entire day watching Netflix, hang out with my parents? Are we in 2019 or 2020? And what should I eat besides Christmas cookies? Which I think is a phenomenal diet to have after Christmas because if you don't eat them, then they're going to go bad. So eat the Christmas cookies. Welcome to Void Week. Oh, this is good. The bubble of null time between Christmas and the New Year during which nothing exists or occurs. This entire week is dreamed as we float into the empty gray gap. On January 1st, however, we will lurch back into the flow of time. Nausea and headaches are expected. Some of you know this because you have kids that are about to have to go back to school or routines that are about to have to happen, right? And now we're in that mysterious land between Christmas and New Year. A time to tidy the mess that we've made in the last 12 months and ready ourselves for a fresh challenge of a new year. Or have another slice of pie and see what's on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> Some of you are like, Disney+, Plus all the way. Like, I'm, I'm all about it right now. Last one. We have now entered the twilight zone, also known as the days, the six days between Christmas and New Year's. Anything is possible. All known laws of human existence do not apply until Wednesday. Best of luck to you all, right? So we find ourselves in this time, and it happens every year. It's one of my favorite things that we do at the end of a year is, is we get to those last couple days of a year, and we begin to, to look back on the year that was. We have a unique thing that happens this year is that not only do we get to look back on a year that was, but we also get to look back on a decade that was. Like we are about to adventure into a brand new decade and start a whole new 10 years. And so we get to, in this unique time of our existence, look back on the year that was and on the decade that was. And oftentimes when we do that, there's this phrase that we use in English uh, about this time. It's that hindsight is 2020. Like it's easier to look back. We know that that's just a reference to eyesight. And if you have normal eyesight, it's 2020 eyesight. And a lot of times when we look back at things, it's easier to see the clarity when we look back on maybe some things that we should have done, maybe some things that we shouldn't have done in the year that was. So we look back at 2019, I look back and I say, you know, maybe I shouldn't have gotten so excited about the revolutionary change that was coming to Texas Tech football in 2019. <laughs> I mean, that was probably on me, guys. Like, I, I shouldn't have been as optimistic as I was. Some of you uh, had no idea what 2019 was going to bring to you when it came to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Avengers Endgame and just the end of just this beautiful saga that was the Avengers. It had been years in the making, and you're now going, wow, what a great day to be alive. Like Iron Man, am I right? <laughs> Captain America, what? We look back and we're like, man, I had no idea what to expect there. But I can look back and I can see it clearly. There are some people, maybe in this room, who probably are regretting some of the, uh, the texts or the tweets or the comments they made about storming Area 51. <laughs> probably, probably not the best thing to, 
to look back on now and say, oh, those, those are my best days, right? We look back at 2019, we can always see clearly when we look back, right? We're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I should have done that. Because hindsight is always 2020. But this morning, I want to take us on a journey through Psalms chapter 37 and maybe help us see a different way to look as we're transitioning from one year that was into one year that will be. So if you have your Bible, Psalms chapter 37, we're going to kind of walk through this this morning. But Psalms chapter 37, starting verse 1, says this, fret not yourself, worry not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. That that we can even like look into that and say, hey, fear not the year that was and the people that you interacted with in that year. Maybe the things that you did that year that you're not super proud of. Fear not because that that year is about to fade away. It's no longer going to be who you are. It's going to be who you were and you're about to walk into something new. And so a lot of times when we look and we talk about the future and we talk about a new year and we're excited about 2020 and what that might bring for us, a lot of the times we look into the future with a sense of ambiguity. Like it's unclear. Like we're, we're looking into the unknown. How many of you were in town uh, this past Friday, two days ago, when that crazy mysterious fog blew through? Like it was freaky. Uh, like you couldn't see, in fact, some of you, if you've seen the video of that, the wreck outside of Slayton, uh, of that semi-truck, that is scary to think through this, this pileup that happens. And if you see the video, it looks like it's like on a movie. Like it looks like something you would see, like, oh, that's a stunt double. Well, these are real people. And, it, and it's, it's crazy and scary. But this fog came in, and, and you couldn't see more than 15, 20 feet in front of you. And a lot of times when we think about the future, that's what we look at. We go, oh, I'm just looking into this fog. I'm not really sure what's going to happen. I'm not really sure what 2020 holds for me. It's very unclear and ambiguous and unknown. But what if, what if we could look into the future with the same sense of clarity that we look at our past? What if we could look into 2020 with the same sense of, hey, I know I trust, I see what's in front of me the same way that I see what's behind me. And so I want to propose a way that we do that this morning. Let's continue on in Psalms 37, verse 3. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Now, if we stopped right there and you began to live your life off of those two phrases, God would transform your life. If you got up every morning and say, God, I trust you today and I'm going to do my best to do good. You would live a good life. Like your life would be full of good things that God was using you to do for his kingdom. Trust in God, do good. But it goes on. It says dwell in the land. Live your life. Live life. Uh, live, Live the things that you're doing and your job and your friends and your family and your interests. Live, dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Be faithful to the things that God is calling you to and the things that God is is working in and through you. One of my favorite verses in Scripture, verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. If you begin to say, God, I delight not in the things that that, that my selfish desires want, but I'm going to delight myself in you, and you're going to begin to transform me in the things that give me joy and the things that give me life. And all of a sudden, your life begins to look a little different because you're looking at your future differently. Say, I'm going to trust in you, God. I'm going to do good. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live in the land. I'm going to befriend faithfulness. And I'm going to delight myself in you each and every day. And so I'm going to give you two very simple, very basic ideas that might help you in this transition from 2019 to 2020 as we get ready for the new years, we get ready for this idea of of preparing ourselves for being out with the old and in with the new. How do we walk into the new? How do we walk into 2020 being able to see as clearly as we look into 2019? The first principle is this. We need to put on glasses. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm also going to tell you um, that I have really, really good vision. Like, I look out, and I see a lot of you that have uh, glasses on, uh, many of you who wear contacts, um, and and I'm going to tell you right now, I have no idea what that's like. Like, I don't. Like, I have have really, really scary, creepy, really good vision. 
But here's the thing. If, you've, if, you've, if you need corrective lenses, you understand the value of being able to see your world when you put your glasses on. Be honest. How many of you, if you weren't wearing your glasses right now, would probably run into a wall as you walked into this church? Right? So you sit there and you go, hey, I, I need those glasses. I need those contacts or else I can't exist in life. In the same way, we as believers, we as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we've got to put on our corrective lenses, the lenses by which we see our world on a daily basis. And I'm going to tell you this morning that that's this book. Scripture is the lens by which we see our world. I had a, a professor years ago who made the claim, uh, and I've, I've just kind of attached myself to it through the years, that the Bible is the greatest revelation of God that we can know. Now, obviously, we know that, that someday we're going to be in heaven with Jesus and we're going to be standing in God and all of his glory and all of the wealth of knowledge and insight are going to be revealed to us, but we're not there yet. Right now, we are looking at the world that God has created. We are looking at the world in all of its flaws and all of its sin and all of the, the issues that the world has. And the only way that we can see the world the way that God sees the world is through the lenses of this book. Allowing scripture to be a guide for how we live our life. Psalms 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Here's the thing. So many of us, myself included, they did a study, and that the average American, uh, pastoral staff included, pastors included were in this survey. The average American in the United States today will only read the Bible on a Sunday morning when the pastor says turn to this passage, or when they see it up on the screen. And here's the thing. If you're going to see clearly into 2020, it's got to start with understanding that you are walking blindly into a wall probably, if not first putting on the corrective lenses of Scripture and walking into 2020 saying, hey, my perspective is different because I'm not seeing my world through my eyes. Because if I look through my eyes, there's a lot of people I don't like. There's a lot of people that are annoying. There's a lot of people that I wish weren't in my circle of my everyday life. But if I look through the lenses of Scripture and all of a sudden I see people who need love. All of a sudden I see people who are hurting, who are broken, who need to see the love of Jesus in somebody. But I don't see that unless I first put on the lenses, put on my glasses, and allow Scripture to transform my viewpoint. In 2020, a lot of one of the things that, that Aldersgate is going to focus on is this idea um, that we live in a nation, we live in a time that biblical illiteracy is very rampant. This idea that we as a collective body, we don't know our Bibles. We don't know the, the word that God has given to us that, that teaches us about his characteristics, about his character and who he is and the relationship that we have with him. We don't know because we don't know. And if you know, you know, right? And so one of the things that we're going to start doing in 2020 is, is <coughs> working some ways in which we can add some element of biblical literacy. That we can begin to fall in love with the truths and the words that are found in Scripture. That we can begin to say, hey, this is not just a, an old, antiquated book that I just read on Sunday mornings. But instead, I allow it to transform my life every day. And I begin to see the value in saying, God, your word is the foundation that I'm building my life on. Everything that I do, everything that I know, everything that I speak into other people first come through the lenses of who you are and how you're speaking to your people. And so we've got to put on our glasses. We've got to let the lens by which we see our world be beneficial and helpful as we look into 2020. The second thing is we prepare to see the future of 2020 just the same clarity as we see in 2019 is we've got to ask someone else what it says. Now, one of my favorite things about being a person who sees well is I'm often the person who when someone's like, hey, what's that street sign say? Like, I read it like three blocks ago. Like, you're still squinting to see it. I saw it like two or three blocks ago. And so I love being able to like pretend like I knew where we were um, because they don't know for like another two and a half blocks what that street sign says. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's clearly Peach Street. 
Like everybody knows that. But it's not because I knew it. It's just because I saw it before anybody else did, right? Here's the thing. There are people in your life who see things that you cannot see. And if you would be willing to say, hey, can you, can you tell me what you see in this situation in my life? Can you see what's, what's going on? Can you give me some direction? Can you give me some insight? Because I can't see that far ahead of me, but you can. You have more clarity on this topic, on this idea, on this stage of life. Can you help give me some direction? Some of you know the time when cell phones were introduced, but before every cell phone had a GPS on it, right? There was a time... Uh, that, that the, the, the device in your pocket couldn't tell you at a moment's notice where you were. And so there was a stage in life where you could be lost and you could call someone for help. You wouldn't have to say, okay, let me pull it up on my GPS, drop a pin, hey, tell me where to go. Uh, my cousin years ago, um, she had a cell phone. She was going to see my Mimi and Papa, and she was driving to Stanton, Texas through the back roads, uh, which... All roads to Stanton, Texas are back roads. Uh, but she was driving, and she, she made a wrong turn. And so she called my papa to say, Papa, I'm lost. Uh, and he could have easily said, okay, well, where did you leave from? Uh, hey, where did you turn here? Did you turn left, left, right, right, left? No, he didn't say that. Instead, he said, what do you currently see? Because it's so much easier to tell someone where to go based off what they can currently see. Okay, well, hey, I see a windmill next to a giant red barn. Okay, hey, I know exactly where you are. You're going to go up, turn right, turn left, and you're there, right? The same thing is true in our spiritual life. There's a lot of times that if we'll have the self-awareness to be able to look at someone in our life and say, hey, here's where I'm at, and I don't know where to go. Like, I'm unclear about what the future may be in this situation in my life. If we'll go to someone and say, here's where I'm at, can you see and allow people to speak into us and allow people to, uh, to give us guidance? See, that's the whole point of community, right? Like, this body of believers is a community that's living life together. You have people in your life every day that you're living life in community with, and that's what community is about is leaning on the strengths of each, of each other to help guide your way. Proverbs verse 11, verse 14, or chapter 11, verse 14, says, where there is no guidance, a people fall. But in abundance of counselors, there is safety. And that's not licensed professional counselors. It's just people who are giving direction. There's safety in that. Because you now can lean on the strengths and the viewpoints and the eyesight of others to help give you direction. See, if we start in 2020, if we want to look forward with the same clarity that we look backwards, we've got to start today with some sense of commitment to those two things, to putting on our glasses, to allowing Scripture to be the lens in which we see our world, and relying on others who may have a different viewpoint, who may have a different eyesight of the problem, of the issue, of the situation. Say, will you give me direction? And then when we commit to that, all of a sudden, our life begins to look and feel differently. Look at Psalms 37, starting verse 5. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him. There's that same trust happened earlier in the passage. That same thing gets brought up again. Why? Because we're walking into something that we may not know. We may not be able to see all the way. But we say, God, I'm going to see what you've put in front of me. I'm going to trust in the path that you have for me. And he will be faithful to act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. What's he saying? He's saying now he's going to start using you for his kingdom. He's going to start using you to bring glory to his name. He's going to start using you to speak life and light to other people. Why? Because you're following after where he has for you. You've put on the corrective lenses. Hey, Scripture, give me guidance. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing other people along with me on this journey. Hey, will you give me guidance as well? And now all of a sudden he begins to use us to bring glory and honor to his name. And a lot of times when we get into these conversations, we say, well, I, I, I can't do that because I know who I am. Like I know the ways that I've messed up. I know the, the faults that I have. I'm not perfect. Well, that's a good thing you say that because Paul also addresses that in Philippians chapter 3. 
He said, not that I've already obtained all this or I'm already perfect. That's all of us, right? We're not there yet. We haven't achieved this perfection. He said, not that I've obtained it, not that I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You don't have to have your life together to see clarity in 2020. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have any basic idea of what this is. But if you sit there and say, God, teach me today. Give me insight. Give me wisdom. And day by day, you begin to walk that process because you're pressing forward into the future that God has for you. All of a sudden, your perspective is different. All of a sudden, you begin to see clearly because you're not focused on what you can't see. You're focused on what you can see. You're focused on what's ahead of you and what God has for you. The last verse, Psalms 37, verse 7. It says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way. Fret not yourself over the man who carries out evil devices. What's he saying? He says, hey, don't worry. As you're looking forward into 2020, don't worry about the person who all of a sudden has it all together. Don't worry about the person whose life is falling apart. If you begin to compare yourself to this person and that person and this person and that person, all of a sudden I can make myself look really good. So don't compare yourself to all of these other people. Instead, sit, be still, wait patiently for God. And God will show up in your life. God will reveal himself. You see, 2020 has potential to be a great year for you. But it all depends on how you approach it. It all depends on if you're willing to say, God, not by my will, not by my strength, not by the things that I can do, but instead, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to begin to allow my viewpoint to be through the lenses of who you are. Bring other people beside me. And I'm going to begin to walk the path into 2020 with hope, with anticipation, with excitement. Not because everything is going to be sunshine and roses, but because I trust and I see the clarity that you have for me. Because every day I wake up and every day I say, God, teach me something new. God, reveal to me who you are. God, help me walk this path and this journey. So where you are, I just want you to close your eyes. And as we transition from 2019 to 2020, I just want you to process how are you going to make that transition? How are you going to walk from one year to the next? How are you going to walk from one decade to the next? Are you going to do that with clarity? Because you have first put your trust in God, allowed the truths of Scripture to transform your life, and allowed the people who are around you to speak direction and guidance over the things that you can't see. So God, I pray for each person in this room. I pray for the ways in which you are transforming their perspectives today. God, I pray that there are people in this room who because of who you are, because of the things that you have done in and through them, and God, they are going to fall in love with the truths of your word. They are going to fall in love with searching after the love and the mercy, and the knowledge, and the truth, and the peace that comes with your word. God, help us be a people who don't look at our world through the lenses of our own experience, but we look at the world through the lenses of your word. And then as we're walking that adventure into 2020, God, you are putting before us people who can see further down the path than maybe we can, 
who maybe see with a little more clarity the direction that you have for us and allow us to be a people who will listen to the guidance and the insight that you are speaking into us through them. God, we, we want to be a people who don't walk into a new year, into a new decade with fear, with trembling, with timidity. But instead, we, we are a people who walk into 2020 with clarity. Not knowing all the answers, but knowing the God who does. You may be in this room and you may be sitting there and just kind of processing, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to, I don't know how to start that. I just want to tell you it starts today. Here in a minute, the, the worship team is going to lead us in a song that you can stand and you can praise a God who is good. You can praise a God who is in control, who has a hope and a plan for your future. And you can just stand there and worship him. We're going to have some members of our prayer team who will be up at the front of the platform that if you just want to come to them, they would love for you to come up and say, hey, I got no clue. I have no clue how to do this. And they can pray over you that, hope, that, that God will begin to reveal to you to take away the unknown and reveal to you the known. So if you want to come and, and pray with the prayer team, they're there. If you just need to sit in your seat and say, God, I, I don't want to walk into a new year the same way that I walked into the last year. I want to see. And I want to see with clarity. So as the team leads, you respond how you need to. If that's just standing in worship, if that's coming and praying, if that's sitting and just being honest and real with God. You respond how you need to respond as we prepare for what God has for us in 2020.